Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This past week, React 17 was officially announced. Uh, well, not the official version, the RC, but I think as far as the major changes are concerned, it's gonna be most of the same when the actual final version comes out in a week or so. And the big, new, exciting feature of React 17 is no new features. A little strange. Um, uh, I actually have a video about how strange it is that there are no big features of React 17. If you want to check the link down below, it's a little bit, a little fun little skit that I made. So check that out if you are curious. But uh, yes, it's true. The big new feature of React 17 is no features. And to be clear, that's no new developer facing changes. There's no new fun APIs to play with. Uh, none of that's in React 17. The main focus of React 17 and why it's a kind of a big deal, I guess. It's more of a big deal for me as a manager because it adds some stability and longevity to the life of React 17. But the big feature of React 17 is to allow for gradual upgrades in React 17. Historically, when a new version of React was released, a new major version, you would change your version and package JSON from 16 to 17 and then have to just fix your entire application. There was no partial way for you to upgrade your application. And when the React core team was working on new things with React at Facebook, they realized this was kind of a blocker for Facebook at large. Um, just like Facebook and I'm sure many other companies out there, you have some old applications that you don't work on anymore, but still work fine. And when React 17 comes out or eventually React 18, you want to be able to make that upgrade to React 18 and then ideally not worry about those old applications. They work fine. You don't really need to go through the stress and trauma of trying to upgrade them. So why don't we just leave them alone? And that's what React 17 allows for. Uh, the big change to enable that with React 17 is a change in how event delegation works in React itself. And that's really the main reason why React 17 is a major version change. Um, you, may, you may not know it, but when you actually install React uh, up to version 16, because it's changing in 17, when you install React, um, React itself actually installs a global event listener on the document of the page. And they do this for primarily reason to kind of, the, it's for event delegation, um, such that when you add hundreds of clicks in your React application, there's only one actual event listener registered on the web page. And that's done for performance reasons and also other reasons, but mostly performance reasons. The issue is that this event delegation handler is installed on the document root, which can cause conflicts uh, with other libraries like jQuery, but also other versions of React. So the change with React 17 is to move that initial event handler from the document to where you're actually rendering your React application. So when you mount, when you mount a React application, you say what div you want to mount the React application and where everything is rendered inside of that. And that big change for React 17 is to put that event delegation handler there. And that's really the secret sauce to making it easier to do, uh, easier and more confident to do gradual upgrades because you now can scope the, surf, the, the exposure of your React application to just its root itself and it will have a global impact. At large and there's other changes that the blog post goes into but the big major marquee changes is this gradual uh, upgrade um, effort that they're trying to do with react 17 and really the underlying reason for this is that over the years the react t react has done a great job of deprecating apis but never removing them uh, which is great because it means that when you upgrade a version of react you don't really have to worry about migrating old usages of the old context API or having to actually re change class components that are using deprecated lifecycle methods. And these have all been deprecated for a couple of versions now, but they still work in React 16 and they're still gonna work in React 17. But this 
goal with React 17, what the React team is kind of like setting themselves up for in the future is by letting you incrementally upgrade React applications, it gives them more flexibility and, and almost permission to actually remove, finally, some of these old deprecated APIs. What that means is that in React 18, potentially, the old context API might not exist anymore. It might mean that um, default props as a way to pass default props to a class component or a function component uh, might go away. There's been discussion about that. Um, it might even mean, and this is me talking completely out of my ass, uh, class components go away. I doubt that's React 18, probably React 200 if I had to guess, but this version of React, React 17, gives the React core team, it gives themselves permission in some ways to be more aggressive in pruning the core features and support of React moving forward because they've now made it, it possible for you to have a way to let old React applications exist as they are and not be forced to upgrade them unnecessarily. And that's really a huge feature. I mean, myself planning a new project, if I wanted to use a new fun like React concurrent mode with React 18, let's say it comes out, this is a conjecture, um, I don't want to have to make my entire existing application support concurrent mode. I don't care about the old settings page that just lets you change your email address. I don't care about making that concurrent mode safe. It's using React 16, let it stay there. I'm gonna play with the new fun stuff with the new fancy dashboard that has all these fancy renderings and stuff and I can have pretty much my cake needed too. It, it's gonna make productivity immense for both the React core team and then also for end developers to then let you feel unencumbered from adopting the newest and greatest things of React in the future. I'm gonna have another video when React 17 goes final. Um, there's other small changes in React 17. Uh, it's kind of like a, a bundling of all these very small changes that are actually breaking. So safer to make it a major version change to denote that there are some dragons there, but all things considered, uh, React 17 is probably the safest upgrade that you could ever make with a React application. Um, it's an RC right now because they're trying to just make sure that they iron out all bugs, but by and large, you should be pretty bug free with React 17. And really it'll be React 18 when things get really exciting again. Hopefully that kind of gives you the download about what React 17 is and why it's exciting in more surprising ways than you may think. Uh, it's setting the stage for future versions of React for the React team to sprint maybe a little bit more brazenly than they have in the past. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something about React 17. Always fun to talk about React. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, become one so I can talk to you more about all the lovely technologies out in the ecosystem. And if I don't hear from you again, then hopefully I'll see you in the next React video. Uh, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.